uh, Rick Satava uh, has been such a person all his life. Uh, he's recognized as uh, probably the father of uh, medical robotics. Uh, some 20 odd years ago when people did not think robotics is going to go anywhere, he was the person uh, in charge of a DARPA program as part of U.S. military who invested in, in, in development of a, a robots uh, for medical application, um, which has evolved to the current Da Vinci system, the largest uh, robotic medical company in the world, and as Eileen said, uh, the strongest. Um, Richard is a professor of surgery at University of Washington, uh, and he is still a senior science advisor at the U.S. Army Medical Research and Material Command Center, the TATRIC. Um, his list of accomplishments are enormous for me, and I think it's in your booklet. He has served on the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy Committee on Health and Food and Safety, and he's had a very distinguished military career, and more importantly, a very distinguished academic career. As I said, he is he's a visionary man, and I've asked him to talk about um, what future of robotics hold, and uh, I'm sure you will not be disappointed. No. Good afternoon, and I apologize. I'm always embarrassed when I have to give a lecture about advanced technologies, and I can't get things to work. That really is embarrassing. I realize I'm standing between you and some fabulous weather and dinner, so we'll make this uh, hopefully relatively quick. Um, so we'll talk about uh, what is going to be happening, uh, and I generally uh, try to address issues that are 20 to 50 years from now. Uh, Yogi Berra was right. The future is not what it used to be. And that's a very profound statement. What it means that most of the things that you assume are correct in your field are wrong, particularly in healthcare. And the reason is that healthcare as we practice it today is about 99% industrial age and about 1% information age. We've never made the transition, and I'll show you why. And so a lot of the things that we're trying to do may not be successful because we're trying the wrong approach. We're trying using technology or ideas that are 100 years old and just trying to make them better. So the concept here is that new technologies are emerging from information age that are driving the basic approach, if you will, in all areas of health care. We think that the future is here. It's the information age. So, what was the information age? Robots. This is the concept of what the robot is. Whether we like it or not, the media, movie industry, and so forth have given us an incredible idea of what a robot should be able to do. Uh, this is from the movie Aliens, and that is the robot there. The human just teased him, saying, you'll never be as good as a human. Of course, the robot takes issue with this and plays this little game called Mumbly Peg that most Boy Scouts get when they have their first pocket knife. And so what you see here is the robot proving to the human that greatly exceeds the capabilities of what it would be. All right, well, is that real or not? Let's look at, say, a $2,000 robot. This is a pick-and-place robot. But if you'll notice, it's doing exactly the same thing that Cyborg in the movie did. It put the probe or the knife in between each finger. <clears throat> and this was done at the MIT Media Lab uh, from Swinney that runs that lab, uh, at the Touch Lab. And he says, OK, I'll show you how good our robots are. And he started the robot. And I said, Swinney, uh, this is too slow. He says, have patience. And so he started to increase it. Right, got a little bit faster. And I said, Srini, I don't need a robot. I'm a surgeon. I can do this. Not a problem. He said, have patience. That's what a surgeon doesn't have. And so he kept on grinding it up. And about here is when I, I said, I give me on this one. I can't do it this fast. And I can't do it that fast, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, no coffee break, and never make a single mistake. So... The point being, yeah, I know you're glad you weren't stabbed, okay. The point being is there are certain things that have been emphasized repeatedly in the things that robotic systems can do that humans cannot do. It goes beyond the physical limitations that we were born with. 
And keeping that in the back of your mind, that's probably one of the most key and important things for whatever you develop. If a human can do it, forget it. If you can do something that a human cannot do, then it becomes valuable. Probably the most important part about that is that healthcare is the only industry that does not have a computer representation of their product. We could have, but we don't. Every single industry makes a CAD CAM model, a model of some kind, and they do testing, evaluation, virtual prototyping, and so forth, before they even build one. Every time I see a patient, it's kind of like an experiment, and they come into me, but they're already sick. I have no idea what they're like when they're well. We have a model. We don't have a control of what that well person would be. But if we were to do a total body scan of each patient and embed that with all of their data, we would have a CAD CAM. We would have a computer representation of that individual. And then we would be able to do, like all other industries, the ability to go test, evaluate, and even simulate and predict what uh, potential outcomes would be. So until we get this, our industry healthcare is going to remain behind every other industry that's out there today. Uh, we had a program at DARPA called the Virtual Soldier Program. We only did the heart and we only did uh, five levels of integration, hemodynamics, uh, um, uh, kinematics, uh, electrophysiology, uh, blood flow and so forth. We modeled the heart of a specific pig and then we had that heart driven by that pig's vital signs, and we had the virtual heart, and every time the real heart beat, the virtual heart would beat. We shot the pig <clears throat> in the heart, and then we scanned them, and we were able to go ahead and make the wounded heart follow exactly what the natural heart would do. But we also were able to predict, and we were able to predict with about 85% accuracy whether that pig was going to live or die, and how long it would take for them to die. This is what is being done in every other industry. But we don't have that capability because we don't have a representation of our patients. Some people don't get it. The revolution about the information age is about simulation and visualization of what you can be doing. So what about robots? Well, I think robots not a machine. A robot's an information system with arms or legs. A CT scanner is not an imaging device. It's an information system with eyes. And when you look at the things that physicians use for diagnosis and treatment as information systems, either acquiring data or taking what you know and affecting something for you, then you can do things that aren't physically possible in the real world. You can integrate things together. And I think earlier today, our experience with the MRI scan is an example of that, getting information and allowing you to use, say, HIFO or something else to actually affect something. It's all information, and you were allowed to do something that physically you couldn't do by themselves. And so the robot, in essence, is an information system. You can sit down and you can do open, you can do minimally invasive, and as Santiago said, we can probably start doing note surgery, or we can do remote telesurgery like Maron was doing. We can import images, as was demonstrated with the MRI scan, and actually do image-guided surgery and navigation. And we can do preoperative uh, pre planning and surgical rehearsal. The surgeon can sit down and practice the operation on the image, make mistakes, but the patient doesn't die. We do this in every other industry, particularly aviation, but we don't do in healthcare. And then you can do uh, simulation training, uh, not on patients, but on the simulators. And you can do all of those from one place at one time. And that's the surgical console. It's an integrating system. It's a system of systems that allows you to do things in one place at one time that otherwise you wouldn't be able to do. The other big concept here is whenever possible, try to use energy instead of physical objects because energy is much easier to control the mechanical objects by information. The two of them are much easier to integrate together. Uh, these would lead to things like smart instruments. So what we have here is this is a smart grasper. It can be laparoscopic or it can be robotic. It has light emitting diodes, exactly the same ones that you have, say, for the pulse oximeter on your finger. And it also has pressure sensors, strange gauges, and so forth. So when the group at the University of Washington Biorobotics Grab grasps a piece of tissue, not only does it tell how much 
uh, pressure is being on there, but it looks at the blood flow and see if we're strangulating it and getting ischemia and so forth. We are learning things about that through intelligent instruments. 